Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so firstly, maybe, yeah, I'm going to talk about this merry topic of small sets in SO3R. So firstly, maybe introduce some notation uh, in this talk because I'm working in groups, so G will always be a group. And then if you're interested in product set, so you have two sets, A and B, subset of G. And then, so we define the product side to be the collection of little a times little b for this a, a and b and b. So W means uh, we care about the set of a, b. Actually, we care about the big right, set of a square divided by set of a. So maybe I should say, uh, in this talk, a to the k means the k fold product of a. So it's a1 times a k. So by SO3R, I mean, I mean three-dimensional rotation group. Three R uh, to be the matrix, let's say uh, Q, M3R means three by three matrices. And uh, Q, Q times Q is Q, Q is one. And determinant of Q is one. So it's a three-dimensional rotation group and actually, uh, you use SO3 every day. If you look at some other places, you have to rotate your head. So it's a very, very natural object to make sure. Um, okay. So I want to say some basic property of SO3R, this three dimensional group, in case you're not super familiar with. Um, so it is a compact group and it is connected. So by compact and connected means it has a unique higher measure up to scalars, different scalars. So here in this talk, we will fix a normalized higher measure. That means the whole group has measure one. And it is connected means it doesn't have open subgroups. So all the reasonable subgroups have measure zero in this case. Um, okay. And because it's a three by three matrices, so you can naturally embed SO3R into R to the nine, say. So you can give it a real manifold topology. So this is what I mean by open set in this case. And uh, SO3R has dimension three. So it's the simplest compact simple groups. Yes. And uh, it has many one dimensional subgroup. It's maximal torus, actually one dimensional torus. And it doesn't have any two dimensional subgroup. Okay, so some property of SO3R. So in this talk, I'm interested in the conjecture. Maybe I should write it down. So the conjecture by uh, Emmanuel Bridier and Ben Green. So they didn't tell me the time. They told me it's around like 15 years ago. So uh, 0, 08, right? Must be 0, 08. Yeah, if I compute it correctly. Like roughly 15, 15 years ago. And uh, so they ask, they write it down, if A is a subset of SO3R. So it is open and has sufficiently small measure. It's a very small set. Sufficiently small. Then the W mu a square should be at least three point nine nine mu a. So this is their conjecture. So maybe I should explain, like, uh, for example, like why three point nine nine, and maybe um, why we care about this problem in SO three R. So maybe first I have to try to answer why three point nine nine. So this 3.99 is in fact best possible number. So in fact, um, if you look at the neighborhood of a one-dimensional subgroup, because locally, um, okay, SO3R has three-dimensional, and by quotient out a one-dimensional subgroup, they behave like two-dimensional. So in a very small neighborhood, we should expect some Brumikowski phenomenon for R, like R square. So in this case, we would expect four in this case. So maybe let me try to explain by Brumikowski. I mean, so this talk probably I mentioned Brumikowski a couple of times. Maybe I should remind you, uh, remark or like recall. So I just say Brumikowski inequality in Euclidean space R D is the mayor of A plus B divided by D is at least the mayor of A. Plus the of B to the 
But here we assume A and B are the sum type A, B, and they are all measurable. And you can see when A equal to B, we have this factor two to the D. So that's why we expect something like four. And later on, I will give you some other examples show that uh, four as 3.9 is actually necessary. You cannot improve it to four. Okay. So yeah, and uh, maybe I'll give you some motivation. So why we study this problem besides a conjecture by Brayden and Green. Um, so actually study this minimal doubling problem is a quite old problem. And uh, for example, it was asked by uh, Hans Dog and Magnus. I think I mentioned here in my notes. I'll find it. For example, by two bridging the mathematician, Hans Dog and Magnus. So the ask give you a locally compact group or give you a Lie group. And what is the correct doubling constant? This number here. And uh, what is a Brumikowski? Do you have a Brumikowski phenomenon there? And uh, so you can view SO3 as a simplest example here for this problem, simplest compact question. Uh, yes. And uh, okay, so one more thing is in a recent study of approximate groups. So usually when we when we don't have representation theory, we have to use some limit argument, a lot of times like ultra products or uh, gromov hausdorff limit, etc. And in lots of cases, we will arrive at the locally compact groups. So that's another motivation to see uh, why we care about this. So, okay, maybe I can write down our theorem. Theorem I want to present today. So we, uh, we solve this conjecture. So actually, we proved for every absolute, there is this delta such that for every A, subset of S3R. With mu a, the number of a smaller than delta, we have um, the square should be at least four minus epsilon. So this is our main theorem. And uh, yeah, any question about statement? And we also prove an asymmetric version. So as what we expected for Brumikowski. So in fact, for every epsilon as a number of n greater than zero, still exists delta such that you have two sides a and b with number of a, number of b, both of them smaller than delta, and they differ by a factor n, bounded by n. So let's say your b is bounded by n times mu a, at least mu a divided by n. And in this case, we have a Brumikowski in the code. Uh, so four cross one to one half, right? Two dimensional. But we have something uh, larger. Yeah. So one half plus epsilon is one by two minus something, cross one to this four minus something. Okay, so we have this. Um, any question about statement? Okay. So before I talk about proof and connection to other, I want to mention about something about connection to other problems, but uh, maybe first I want to show you a construction to show that why you have four minus epsilon. Because in usual Brimikowski, you have exactly four. And in fact, in non compact case, um, we also have a, a Brimikowski for non compact groups. There, you also have something greater than four instead of four minus epsilon. So, probably want to ask why we must have this epsilon here. And this actually because of the curvature from the symmetric space. So, it's, I think it's an interesting phenomenon here. So, let me talk about this. Uh, a more precise construction. So this is essentially the construction mentioned by uh, 
manual method because of the field point idea. So you want to consider some disk from the symmetric space and the pre-image of that. So we know SO3, X trans to here on the field, S2, giving R2. So maybe draw a picture. And I thought to be group is SO2, torus group. So let's fix a point. And actually, it's easy. So fix a point, let's say the point on the z-axis. And then the action is, uh, for every point here, I just move it back to z, right? This is the action. I give you a concept. So because of this, we can define a set to be a small neighborhood of the North Pole, like moving all the points within this angle. But let me write it down. So we can define in theta, essentially, let me draw a picture. Essentially, to be this. G in SO3, the angle between Z and GZ may be a vector, is smaller than theta. So you consider this small cap. And one can check, it's not completely trivial, but it's easy to check A theta square is just A2 theta. So we have um, A theta square. In two theta. So it's nice. So we have control of doubling. And also, it's, uh, I think it's known from older or even earlier, how to come. Maybe you clean or something. I don't remember. But there's an old formula of computer the volume of the gap uh, of this cap. So we have the measure of mu a theta is uh, sine squared theta by two. So this is an old formula. <laughs> But just continue with you. Okay, so now uh, we can check the relation between this a2 theta and a theta. So the measure of a theta square is a2 theta sine square theta. And then by using this uh, elementary formula, you have 2 cos square theta by 2. And that's why we have something smaller than 4 given by the curvature. So in general, this number will be smaller than one. And when theta goes to zero, it close, uh, goes to one. And this will be mu a theta. Okay. And because of this, uh, we can make a more general conjecture than that one, greater and greater one. So the conjecture is something for a very small set. They ask for limit structure. But actually, we can make it stronger for all set based on this construction. So we call it a strong greater degree conjecture. Um, for every A, that's all three. Then we have the little square should be at least. Uh, in this case, we should just plug in because cos theta squared is one minus sine theta squared. Plug in, you have formula A, this corresponds to 3.99, the four part, minus four minus of A squared. So here, when you know, it's smaller than half, otherwise, you have one. I trivial can use your type inequality. Okay. Um, and uh, okay, we also believe equality happens if and only if your set is, is like a disk from S2. Okay. We didn't prove it, it's still open. I think it's a nice conjecture on itself. Okay, any question? Um, good. So, um, so here this conjecture asks for SO3. So we can also generate this conjecture to all simple degree. But you think this is the conjecture just because of the cosine square, like because of what happened? So, yeah. or do you have any other kind of reason to think? Um, at this moment, not really. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
But actually, I want to mention some non-compact example. So we can also make the conjecture for non-compact groups, and there are some reasons there, I think. Um, okay, so that's a conjecture for SO3. So we can also generalize with a great conjecture for other groups. So because it's easy, you just take a maximum proper compact subgroup, you take a neighborhood of it, and then you have 3.99 looks like two to some power minus epsilon. So it's easy to consider generalization. Uh, yeah, let's call it a vector for general. Actually, compact neighbors. Actually, compact neighbors. I mean, that is general compared to SO3. So, um, so G is a compact simple group. Of dimension B. And then A subset of G, small, sufficiently small. Then, okay, so conjecture is very easy to make. So A squared should be at least two to the D minus M minus epsilon. Where that's the dimension of a proper maximal complex level. Uh, this is well defined because all such groups are conjugate to each other. So it's sort of unique after conjugation. Okay. Uh, if you look at this conjecture, you probably want to ask what happened for non compact groups. So this is for compact groups. For non compact groups, actually, this is resolved by the same group of authors. So we call it a non compact Bermikowski inequality. Uh, let me just write it down. Non compact groups. So G is uh, non compact simply a finite center. For example, all the linear algebraic groups have finite center. And in this case, we have. Actually, we prove an asymmetric version, but let me just write it down for a symmetric case. So we have mu a squared should be at least 2 to the d minus m mu a. So m is still the same thing. Um, I'm a bit lazy, so let me just do this. So here, proper is not necessary because any compact group are proper. The whole group is non compact. So this is for non-compact groups. And uh, so here you can see this is something like strictly, okay, it's not quite strictly greater, greater equal. So you don't really have this minus epsilon. This is because in the symmetric space, the sectional curvature is uh, non-positive for non-compact case and non-negative for compact case. So that's why you have this difference. And in fact, we believe in loss of groups, you have strict, strictly greater when the curvature is not flat. And okay, finally, the final conjecture is uh, we can carry out this construction to non compact group as well to see what happened for not necessarily small set. So we believe this behaves like a limit structure when A is small enough. For large enough A, it should behave differently. Um, okay, so yeah, let me mention the construction for ISO2. So it's two by two matrices of determinant one, and uh, it is a simplest non-compact simple group of dimension three, and uh, similarized SO3. It acts on hyperbolic plane transitive. So XI 
H2. And you can consider a disk in H2 there. And they have a nice formula. This there is hyperbolic sign, the integral of hyperbolic sign. And you can do the same construction, the same computation will give you the following conjecture. After choose a hard matter. Okay, let me tell you another question later. So new a square should be at least formulae. And this comes from the this term comes from the Bermikowski term here. Because SL2 has dimension three, and SO2, it contains a copy as SO2 has dimension one. So three minus one is two. So they have, they have four. Plus the quadratic term. Um, two things. First, you can see this um, inequality, especially the coefficient here, depends on the choice of parameter. If you dilate your higher matter by C, then you have actual factor C here. So this term doesn't depend on the choice of higher matter. So this inequality, we just choose mu A to be one. So normalize higher matter, so that mu A is one. We do this normalization. And uh, you should think about, so this term capture when the set of A goes to zero, if the mu A goes to zero, and this term capture the mu A goes to infinity. And this is also a conjecture. And um, maybe I should mention this. Um, so we shouldn't stop making this conjecture for just SO3 and SO2. So in fact, in the paper, we made a conjecture for all simple B groups. So, Do you normalize to be one? I don't understand. Um, um, so I just normalize mu a so that mu a equal to one. That's mu a squared greater than eight? Or, or I don't, maybe something I don't understand. Actually, Let me think if I normalize mu a equal to one. So I, I, um, so I choose mu a to be the size of some disk of radius r. And the size of disk of radius r have size um, zero to r, capital H sign. Uh, yes. So I assume, you, I assume you mu a corresponds to from zero to one from that disk. By choice of higher matter. I think this is one, right? So hyperbolic cosine is e to the t plus e to the minus t divided by two. And then they have two plus two divided by two is one. So in that case, it's eight, I think. Yes. Okay. But I think one should not uh, focus on the choice of higher matter. Maybe I compute some theory, but after normalization, you should have some. So I want to compare this with a famous Kumbi sign phenomenon from analysis. And in fact, this is also the motivation why Ben and Emmanuel uh, made this conjecture. So we also want to see some connection between the combinatorics and Kumbi sign phenomenon analysis. So Kumbi sign says that in uh, non-compact groups, non-abelian groups, locally compact groups, so you have F convolution G, T norm is upper bounded by F2 norm, G2 norm for every G bridge that. And you can see this is not true for general abelian group. So this is a phenomenon in non abelian groups. It's trivial for compact groups. And uh, if you plug in F equal to G equal to integral function of A and let P goes to two, you will have and apply holder here. So you have mu a square is uh, greater greater than some constant depends on epsilon, mu a two minus epsilon. Okay. And this minus epsilon because you cannot take p equal to two. So you have some, for every p like sufficiently close to two, you have some minus epsilon loss here. And this is, uh, for example, this is true for iso 2 r And you can see here is a kind of strengthening of Kumbi style phenomenon for SL2R. You should, you should generally see quadratic growth here instead of two minus epsilon. So I think uh, it would be an interesting conjecture if this can be solved. 
that give you some more thing about convolutional functions. So once you have this uh, estimate for sets, okay, this is for A square, but I think you can also make it asymmetric for AB. And then you can go back by considering this uh, super level set and try to get some information for general convolutional functions. So I think um, that is the connection between this expansion. So what would you expect to get? Like what would your conjecture lead to in this analysis? And if you take it back, what um, once you were able to prove this conjecture, what what kind of would you get at some other version of this Kuhnstein like, like um, conjecture? So so at least I would give a strong strong version for this. And then by going back, I, I haven't tried the combination yet because currently I don't know how to solve it. But I believe you you guys. You know, that would be, you know, it would give you an indication if this is some other inequality that people conjecture in analysis, then yeah, probably, that yeah, probably I need to try. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Um okay, yeah, I'll think about it. Okay, so those are the conjectures, and uh, yeah, I'll mention about some earlier works and to see the proofs. Okay. So one thing I want to mention is you can see we solved the Bermikowski conjecture. The this one. In non-compact case, we have a complete solution. But here we only have something for ISO3, a special result for a sufficiently small set. So you probably think this result is a bit weaker compared to that one. And the problem to see like why we can't just use a method here to solve ISO3. Probably this is an initial question. And actually, for us, when we try to look at this problem, the first thing is can we generalize the method that we developed here to solve the compact case? And it turns out we cannot. So actually, there's a huge difference between compact and non-compact case. But I think it's probably expected in these analytic combinatorics. For example, um, yeah, like cauchy Davenport is much harder than just proving A plus A is at least 2A minus 1 in the integer setting. Um, and usually because the distribution of your set, the number can loop back in the compact case. And here, the difficulty is even more uh, essential. For example, in SL2, what we used to prove the Brumikowski case is Ivasova decomposition. So you have this K, A, N decomposition for uh, the groups. And in SL2, so K will be the torus group. Uh, just, uh, just make sure you cosine theta sine theta. And then you have this diagonal, and then you have these statics. So every two by two matrices of determinant one can be written as a product of these three. Okay. And this is isomorphic to the torus group, the group we are already familiar with, easy group. And this is a copy of R. And this is another copy of R. So intuitively, you can view SL2 as T times R times R. Okay, this is not uh, essentially quite correct, but you can think about that. And our proof follows from uh, like an induction type argument. So if you know the Brumikowski in T times R times R, you can cover back to SL SL2. Okay. And then induction. Induction of dimension. Let me mention two remarks. The first one is what I could hear is not quite correct. So we didn't really use induction, but I can view our method as sort of induction. Because for SL2 tilde, the universal cover of SL2. In this case, if you look at K and decomposition, it looks like, okay, it's not very rigorous. It looks like R times R times R. Every copy are like, isomorphic to R, but this is open. So we couldn't prove SL2 tilde our Brumikowski. So our Brumikowski only for group with finite center. So this one uh, has a infinite center, 
like center Z here. This curve on the K part, so you have a infinite center. So our proof is not quite induction, but you can view this as sort of induction. So this is for non-compact case. Um, and if you apply Ivasava to SO3, it will return you like SO3 and trigger group, trigger group. So it doesn't really helpful. Um, OK, so that's why this is uh, for a booming cost. So I also want to mention another work. It's another result by myself. Um, my friend, Chun Ming Chuan, one of the authors of the paper. So another result, which is, uh, the proof is uh, much longer than Brumikowski. Here, we prove some results for general compact groups. So with weaker band, but not for only small set, for arbitrary set. So what we prove is, so if G is a compact, Semi-simple. A is subset of G. It's any like open or compact nice set. So it makes the W to be variable. In this case, we have mu is square. It's at least the first thing not larger than one. The whole group has mirror one. And here we have so two mu term is trivial from commissar type inequality. But we have some gain. So we have C times mu A. So it's sort of like 2 plus C times mu A, but have another term, 1 minus 2 mu A. Hopefully. C is an absolute constant independent from the trace of G. So it's true for every group. Um, so you can see this uh, 1 minus 2 mu A is necessary. Because from that construction for SO3, you can see that when your cap is almost have size one half, the A square almost have size one, but not quite. So the doubling constant approaches to two when your set approaches to one half. So that's why you must have this term. And this term capture for a small set. So here in particular, the new is small. This term will be just a constant, we don't care. In this case, our early result tells us it's square. And our C is like into the negative 12. So you have minus zero. Still finite minus zero, but minus zeros. Okay. And this is some general result for all groups, including large set. Um, cool. So one thing probably you need to mention is our results for SO3, although we only stated for SO3, but our method works for all groups. So you prove such results for all compact simple groups, uh, maybe even for semi-simple groups, but it's only sharp for SO3 or like SO3 times some torus or something. So you only state the interesting part. Okay. Check. So I think I still have 20 minutes. So, so. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Good. So I want to talk about the uh, proofs, maybe. Proof okay. idea. So I mentioned in the non-compact case, we have Yavasava decomposition, and that helps us a lot. But in a compact case, we don't have it. So our idea is, what about our less taken limit? Can we transfer the compact group setting to non-compact groups, and then we can use Yavasava decomposition? So that's the general idea. Limit argument. So maybe let me first uh, very brief, briefly mention the general idea, modular sum. Uh, I will try to hide some difficult part just to tell the idea. Um, proof by contradiction, assuming this is wrong. That means you have a sequence of counter examples and they are smaller and smaller and the doubling is always smaller than 3.99, let's say. 
you have a sequence of a n and uh, the measure of a n goes to infinity uh, to zero. Yeah, infinity this is because the result is for stupidly small. So you have a sequence of example is smaller, smaller measure. Um, all of these are subtitled by the three. That's the only patch. And uh, small so W. So just take epsilon to be a uh, one over a hundred. Okay. Assume you have this. And now what we do is uh, we normalize a higher measure by an so that each of ai has measure one. So define mu n to be mu divided by mu a. So now what we have is a triple. So we have an, we have mu n, we have g n, which is g, SO3, all the group are SO, SO3. And what we have is uh, mu n of a n is 1. And because of this, we know that uh, the set of g goes to infinity. Okay, it's hard to write mu, mu n of g. So probably you can see it because of this, we try to uh, obtain some non-compact structure from here. And we still have W because it doesn't really depend on the choice of mirror. You end up A n squared 0.99. So what we do next is we take a limit. We take a suitable limit. In our proof, what we use is ultra product. So in the proof, we use ultra product. Okay. I mentioned that modular is some, okay, I've explained uh, the hidden difficulty. But assuming uh, we have, we arrive at the infinity, mu infinity and g infinity. So this is a limit structure, just take an ultra product. Choose a non principal ultra filter, take an ultra products, pass to the limit. Um, okay. So what we have is because we are taking limit, we have mu infinity of a infinity is still one, right? Um, mu infinity of g infinity is infinity, and we have small w. So now go, uh, it's a slightly tricky part. So we are, we are going to use Lee model theorem to caution down to locally compact groups and then caution down to Lee groups developed by Woody Kuchowski. The version we use is by Massicott and Wagner. Uh, here's some difficulty, but I will explain a bit later. Let's just see the global picture, how it goes. By, here is, I'm a bit cheating here. By Lee model. We can find pi, which is a good model, mapping the group generated by A infinity to a bell. Now it's a deep. So these results are not effective, right? You don't have a relation between delta and epsilon. Yes, it's not effective yeah. okay. because we're taking out of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, there's some real difficulty here, but I'll explain it. So actually you have to pass the approximate group 
and then you'll lose 3.9 line. I will mention later. For the tuning, you have a nice new model, Macintosh groups. And because of this feature, so we can arrange that I is non compact. And we can make it connected. And unimodular. So it's crucial to make a unimodular because if you have non unimodular group, then AB could be very, could be smaller than MUA if you choose a life parameter because B is timing on the, left, on the right. But because the matter in compact group is unimodular, once you take a limit, it's still unimodular. Okay. And then what we do is we apply our Bermikowski. Apply none of the Bermikowski. Uh, hopefully I didn't erase. Okay, so probably I already knew this. <laughs> it used to be here. Uh, Nano Binet Bermikowski tells you, let's say for a symmetric set, mu a square is at least mu to the uh, two to the d minus m times mu a. So here we have d minus m equal to one. And this is the crucial part. So here we, we take advantage of the gap type result in non uh, non-compact groups. If you have something smaller than four, it must be something like two because you have two to some power, integer power. So smaller than four means d minus m is smaller than two because everything is integer, so it must be one. And by using some basic three groups theory, we can show that when d minus m equal to one, the only case is um, you are mapping to r. So actually there exists chi map f to r with compact curve. So the only non-compact case is actually real. It's E or A actually. I, anyway, anyway, compact kernel. Um, okay, now you're mapping to R. So how to finish it? So actually you can stack a, a lot of time here, like how to finish the proof. Because if you think about, you have smaller, smaller disk in SO3. Take a limit, you will arrive at the algebra, which is R cube. So having a copy of R looks all right. But here we use, um, the thing is we forget about, we want to forget about our A. So actually, uh, maybe I should uh, mention here, when we map into L, what I want to show the, the image of A infinity also have W 3.99. So this is actually important. Let's say mu L is a mirror on the L. So what we want is projection of the infinity square is bounded by 3.99 projection of the infinity. So we want to keep, keep the 3.99 and I replace so that we have time from the constant. Something smaller than four means is actually dimension one. You have R with compact curve. And now at this moment, let's forget about A. We choose an interval in R. And uh, because of the problem interval, we can check i plus i is 2i. So let's say lambda is of the big variant R. So the w is 2. And what we do is we just pull it back. So lambda, okay, maybe let's phi to be a uh, pi. Imagine uh, an infinity in the ultra product group to R. So we can define B infinity to be the phi inverse of I. Probably you can guess uh, how to finish it. So B infinity because it captured the property of I. So the W of B infinity is still true. So mu infinity in this uh, ultra product. Okay. And now because we obtain, okay. 
uh, assuming like suitable definability and stuff. Remember, we obtain this A infinity by taking limits. So we can just go back to GN. So there exists N and B and some set of GN. We can call that GN is F03. So here in the limit, we have two. When we go back, we have two plus epsilon for small epsilon. For every epsilon region zero. So here in the equal level. Um, and this will contradict our marigold gap result because we need to have a constant gap 10 to the negative 12. We can just choose this epsilon smaller than 10 to the negative 12. So this is the general idea of the proof. Modular looks some different. This is the global picture. So what did you use the compact kernel? That was kind of crucial, right? The fact yes. that so where did you use it? So I use it when I pull back of the I, you have finite set. You don't have infinite set. Mm. Yeah. So it's still a finite. I see. Very set. So I like this proof, it's uh, interesting. And I use uh, all my earlier result on this area. So I had this idea actually a long time ago, but uh, recently we make it work because there are lots of difficulty. I try to explain. And I believe the method we developed in this paper can be applied to some other problems. So if you are familiar with Lee model theorem, probably you already asked, this doesn't make sense. So in Lee model theorem, we have to have an approximate group and the existence of good model comes from the standard cruise task. We construct some very small uh, infinitesimal core of your approximate group and caution that equipped with logic topology, you get a locally compact group. And then using Glitz and Yamaba, you arrive at the Lie group. So there are lots of things here, um, right? So yeah, we have to handle this. So let me see which part have we erased. Maybe. That's like unused under that. Ah, okay. Thanks. So we have some issue. So the first one, we need to have approximate group. That's not difficult. So by our old results of tau, uh, we in a very classic paper. If you have small W set, you can find a approximate group. So maybe I should define what is approximate group. So just uh, to recall you, a set, uh, I don't want to use A, X looks like a, X, yeah, cool. This K approximate group. It contains identity, which is not very important. This metric, which is not very important, <laughs> makes the uh, argument easier. The third one is important. So x squared can be covered by k translate of x. Let's say omega times x is omega smaller k. So you can see this is something stronger than w. So by old result of tau, if we have, uh, let's do mu n a of the square smaller than 3.99, we have small w, then we can find s n is so the problem is if you have 3.99 you lose a lot of castle here so it's still a bounding number maybe two to the ten actually it is, it's around two to the hundred like two to the 64 times k to the something okay. um, so we use the version of beam uh, the model theorem by messi called in wagner so we need to make s and um, Dividable. So we can make it even semi algebraic. It's not very hard. So I will skip that part. So you have approximate group. And the problem is you can find a Lee model theorem mapping the group generated by S infinity after taking out your product to some, let's say, locally compact group. So here's the problem our AN may not live in here. So after you caution down to the locally compact group, you lose 3.99. And what you have is two to the hundred. 
and this will destroy everything because we need to use Bromikowski to get a clarification of result. Okay. So this is the first difficulty. And uh, actually there are many difficulties. For example, even if, even if you manage to show SN has doubling 3.99, Although it's two to the hundred approximate group, the doubling is 3.9. Maybe that's infinity. After we caution down, we lose the doubling. So actually in the classic paper by Woody, he also faced a similar problem. And he proved upstairs means, maybe I should draw something like upstairs, downstairs. Uh, this is not important. I wish I can write a bit smaller. Yeah. So you have SO3, and then you take out your product with some non principal to filter. You arrive in the talk I denote by G infinity, outer product group. And then what I do is I firstly go down to a locally compact using the model. It's actually called locally compact model or good model. And then I go down to the. So I need to pass to some open sample and go down to the. Like Lee and Yamabe. And finally, I go back. This is a picture of the proof. So firstly, here we cannot keep 3.99. So actually, what we carry is the group generated by S infinity. This is the thing we really go down. Okay. And then we have a G prime open subgroup, and this is the thing we really go down. Okay. And then a bit ugly picture. Uh, even if you have this, the projection will lose something. So in Woody's paper, if you have k uh, doubling k, after projection, it becomes k to the 6. If you have 4, then after projection, it becomes 1,000. I mean, it's still a k approximate group, but doubling will change. It's large doubling. And um, there are a couple of more issues I, I won't write it here. For example, when you pass to open subgroups, your site may not live in open subgroups. It might be other way else. And actually, this is one of the difficulty to in a BGT paper. They also uh, too much things. You know, structure theorem of approximate groups. So they still use outer product, and then they still need to map to open subgroups, but somehow you lose some control there quantitatively. Okay. So there are like lots of problems similar at these two. Those are like two typical problems. And what are the solutions? So the first solution is we consider a ran, uh, random translation. So it's a uh, Okay, I need to finish soon. Solution to one. Uh, what you do is a random translation. So I random translate A on the left and the right. So the result we show is we can find G1 and G2. So this random translation is not uniformly random. We need to construct probability measure carefully based on the structure of A. G1, G2, such that uh, let's say if And you have S infinity. What we have is if we let A prime to be G1 A infinity intersect the group generated by F infinity, and B prime is the infinity G2 because we don't want to uh, destroy the W. Then inside S infinity, A prime B prime behave like 3.99. Inside S infinity, 
or that this is something. So that means even if uh, the conjecture map we are doing is only for A times A, we have to consider asymmetric setting to make it work. And I think this should work in a very general case. So now I think in general, if you, want to, you care about a very sharp constant about doubling, we are able to use uh, ultra product and use this trick to keep the doubling. Okay. And the second thing, we use some idea from harmonic analysis in the study of the maximum functions. So the problem caution down is uh, usually we have sort of mini type result caution integral formula. So you have, uh, if you have some A, let's say horizontally is uh, H, so here it's G mod H, and you can decompose the marrow of A into uh, A intersect each cosine of A, like sort of double counting, decompose into A into little fibers. But the problem here is the kernel of the V model theorem it's not a severe group. It's not locally compact. It doesn't really have a measure. And what we have here is, um, okay. So firstly, we use a uh, rather than Euclidean theorem showing that this fiber exists almost everywhere. So we can define F infinity of, of A. Sorry, F A of G, G H, let's say the concept. H is a kernel. I use infinity almost everywhere. But this is not enough because you only have something almost everywhere. But when you consider products, so the mirror zero side times mirror zero side will blow up. So what we do is, um, and then we approximate this function. Okay, the final thing. Fine. This is uh, my locally compact group M. This is my fiber kernel H. You can see this cube is my whole group. So fiber wise, it's not defined the function. And what we do is we look at a small tube at each point of radius epsilon and consider A intersect this tube. Because this volume, this mirror is well defined globally. And then we let epsilon go to zero. So by the way, differentiation theorem in the groups, you have a uniformly convergence there. And this will solve the problem. So we have to do for FA and FA square and study the product set of the, it's a bit tricky there, but it's, it will work. So convert this to F infinity. And we also do it for this guy. And then we can use some level set estimate to resolve the product set. Okay, so I'll stop here. Supposed to resolve the second. Yeah, the second is resolved by this idea. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, sorry, I went yeah. to be too, yeah, I went to be too fast because I ran out of time. So um, yeah, what is the second one? Yeah. So if the kernel is locally compact, <coughs> it will be easy because you can view this as this picture. So if the kernel is a compact group, H. This is my G mod H, and the square is whole group G. So you have some set A. And you caution that. If A does not contain all the full fiber, the A square will have expansion horizontally and expansion vertically. And the product of them will be the expansion of A. So mu A square will be larger than the project projection square. And this is what we want. We want to say the projection square is smaller than A square. And this is the idea, general picture. But the problem is we don't have measures. So we have to approximate it and use this geometric intuition. Do you foresee like any other issues doing this more generally? Um, yes. So actually, our result, uh, our method that already. <laughs> structure of ISO3. Yeah. So this method should work for all groups. And we also have a general Vermikowski for all non-compact groups. And the problem is just in the final step, we don't have a gap result. Oh. Yeah. And the way we prove it is quite complicated. So yeah. But once you have a certain gap result, you should be able to apply this and get the general thing.
Any more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank you again for a great talk.